Real quick before we start, I just wanted to announce that we have launched our brand new custom acrylic brush and paint line, and we do have DVDs to go along with those as well. As you know, I like for my acrylic paintings to look very much like my oil paintings, and I've designed this equipment to help me do just that. I'm really excited for you guys to give them a try. They're all available on our website. All right, let's jump into the painting. Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we're going to do a beautiful, large waterfall painting, and I don't even think we're going to have any sky in it. And of course, if you're enjoying these and you want to see more, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more painting videos. All right, let's get started. There, now I'm just finishing up my little sketch. I just took three or four minutes, and you see, I'm plopping in a little tree. I actually want this tree probably to come over the waterfall, something like that. That would actually look cool. See why you sketch? You have to sketch. Well, you don't have to, but hey, it makes life easy, doesn't it? I think that's a good placement. We may go with that limb a little higher. It doesn't make a whole lot of difference. I'm thinking that limb can go higher, but that's easy to change. Let me set that brush down and grab a little bit of our... I've got a nice soft purple here, but it's mostly blue. I don't want to go crazy with the purple. I really want this to have a nice blue cast to it. So there you have it. Now with this, let's go ahead and just... Now all this canvas is dry except for the um, sketch, obviously. <laughs> and I do have clear gel standing by, but there's no sky in this painting, and so I'm not really too sure how much clear gel I want. Maybe in the water I'll add just a little to the paint. This is not something I normally do, but this is not a, not a normal subject since there is no sky. So anyway, grab a little red, whatever. Just start underpainting this, and then we'll kind of... <laughs> there we go, we'll kind of just go from here. We can always wipe this area down if we need to. I'm just going to start blocking in the color. And yes, I'm going to lose a lot of my sketch. And I'm, it's all right. It doesn't really matter. This is mostly just a guide. Kind of see where the painting's going and make sure it's going in the right direction. Now I'm going to go ahead and just drop in here some of this gray and maybe some brown. That's brown, obviously, but I'd like to go to gray as well in here because some of these rocks might look good. More in the gray tones. And you see that I kind of went crazy with the blue. Did it on purpose because I figured, you know what? I think this whole painting is going to, it's going to rely, oh, here's my palette, by the way. It's going to reply, real, it's going to rely on mistiness in the background. So I'm going to try to keep this as soft as I can, allowing some of these, um, well, some of these background tones to show through. Yeah, there we go. I'm doing a lot of overhand scrubbing today because I, I like the way that that looks. Kind of gives you a rougher texture, and I, I think that works for this area. Cool. And we will obviously have, you know, foliage and stuff in there that will look good as well. But any part of these rocks that show through will be nice, especially toward this waterfall. You can actually take this color and just sweep it down the waterfall. Don't, don't let the waterfall get muddy something coming off. A lot of this painting is coming off the canvas. It's just kind of a cool effect. So, you know, do that with your rocks. And and then it kind of gives, it lends itself to that very vertical feeling. Nice. You could do this in a vertical format. I'm, I don't generally paint in vertical. It's totally fine if you want to. But I like the idea of these big, large, misty areas with just soft, subtle details. I think that that works really well. Cool. Now I'm going to add in some evergreen trees up here. And I, I like this idea because I think I'll push this back. I think it'll be nice. See that? We're pretty much done underpainting now. Lots of random, beautiful colors are worked in there, and that's good. It helps us later. It means less work that you'll have to do to make this thing look good. All right, and see this just drop in these little evergreens and, and we can have all sorts of different trees. Maybe we have some autumn colors in here. You see, we've got, I don't know, it already feels like autumn colors. So I, I'm thinking about those autumn colors, but a few evergreens, not a bad thing at all. Mm, nice rough ones, actually. Just lends itself to, to kind of the wild looking bit of this painting. I don't know, just looks cool. 
very nice. Leave lots of negative space and, you know, leave maybe pockets of this mountain showing through as well. A little one right there, just to, just to fill it in there so it doesn't look like we placed them all one, you know, one after another. Kind of makes it look natural. Speaking of looking natural, maybe right back in here, we do just a little, and I'll probably paint that in brown later, but <laughs> there we go. Now I've got a nice soft highlight color mixed up and ready to go. And I've also determined that our light is coming from the right going to the left. <laughs> Those rocks already told us that. So let's go ahead and start highlighting. Maybe actually a little touch of red into that color would be okay. Look here. <laughs> Last minute mind change. Or change of mind, rather. There. Mm, I like that. I know red is a background color, but let's face it. It's not like we got miles of depth here. Instead, what we have is more of a misty situation, and I love the way that those colors play against the other warm colors in the painting. I wouldn't do this if this waterfall was miles and miles away, but it's very close. So there you go. That's my reason, and that's how I can get away with using warm colors in the background. <laughs> I just had to explain it to make sure that it wasn't confusing, because sometimes color can be confusing. And you, you know, it's good to know what you're doing, or at least have a basic idea of how things should look in nature actually how things do look so that how things should look on your painting there you want to copy nature as best you can and then you sort of once you know how to do it then you start playing with it but you don't want to just start off in left field and then try to work back you know what you're doing first make it look natural and then you can say okay i'm going to purposely do this or that for the sake of the painting that's what i do at least I've, and i've really found it helpful there we go now we've got a nice tinted white color. See that? It's not totally white. It's got a nice tint to it. A little bit of red and yellow will do it for this painting at least. All right, now right up here, you know what? I haven't wiped this down and I thought I might just in case. So tell you what, just for fun, I'm gonna crumple up a paper towel. I do this a lot. Well, not a lot. I do this when I need to. <laughs> Obviously, if you don't have to, why bother? But I'm just gonna lightly rub down the waterfall and just remove a little bit of the extra paint. Okay, good to go. And now let's just come up here with my little detail round, beautiful soft round brush. It's a nice one. And just stroke down. Obviously, this can be blended with the blender brush or with, uh, you know, the detail round wiped out or just a different one. I'm gonna stand back a little. It's got a nice long artist handle for a reason. It's not to look good, it's so that it, so you can get back on it and look down your canvas from a further distance. Look down the brush handle at your canvas. Cool. <laughs> there we go, look at that. I think I will soften this, but not a whole lot. Let's split that right around that rock there. Good. And we can work in blues. This is just the the first initial light. We'll probably put more highlight and more shadow. That's the way things tend to have to go. <laughs> lots of highlight, lots of shadow. Now I'm going to drop in some of these branches right over everything that we just painted. See why we sketch? I had a basic idea of where I wanted this thing even though I covered it up and so it wasn't scary to put in. Not that it would be scary anyway, but hey, you know, <laughs> anything to make it easy, right? I like the way that those branches are dividing. That looks natural to me. One right here needs to cross over. We can't have just a bunch of branches that don't cross over. You could do this with a detail round or the liner brush. I'm just starting starting them out kind of with the three quarter brush. There we go. That looks decent. Okay. So then of course we'll fill that up with leaves and it'll look all pretty and nice and I don't know, just add a lot to the painting. And then right here maybe. Let's do one that kind of comes in. That looks good and even up. So we really fill it in going up. We want a lot of branches up in this area because I don't want to have to do a lot of detail up here. This is not the point of the painting. So let's get that covered with, with branches and stuff. They don't even have to be perfect. <laughs> Some of them look a little goofy. They're going to be covered with leaves in just a few minutes. Well, okay, a little while. I'll do it closer toward the end probably. There. We still got some work to do. All right, over here, I want to do the same thing. Just fill it in. This one I left open, it makes it even easier. Now with the detail round, I'm gonna drop on 
quite a few little leaves up here and I'm going to use a lot of different colors. I'm starting with brown and I'll work this brown kind of in and around this area and then I will change to other things like maybe green into that. You know, whatever. Not too much of the green, but I like the idea of seeing a little touch of green in there. Why not? It helps to tie in with the painting. Not too much, just enough. There, this is a nice soft brush so it layers paint pretty well. Plus, we don't have a whole lot of paint in that waterfall. If you're struggling with this, however, feel free to wipe it down with a paper towel. That will help. Now I'm going to layer on just a little highlight to the branches, kind of up in the leaf area. You see I already did the trunk here, just by stroking it with a nice light yellow color. Something that just goes with the painting. And now I'm just lightly stroking the branches up here. Every once in a while, you don't have to do the whole thing. Now I just finished up kind of highlighting some of these evergreens in here. I wasn't even sure how I wanted to do it, so I just started throwing color on it. That's what we got. So I like it, we're gonna leave it. We may end up putting some stems, and stems. We're not painting flowers today, trunks. Oh boy. Might put some trunks in there. Now what I'm doing is I'm kind of looking overall at the painting and just figuring out what needs a little accent highlight. And of course I would use my detail round for this because it's a soft brush. <laughs> okay, are you guys tired of hearing me say the same thing? But I say it every time because it's important because you get up here and try to do this with a filbert brush or something and you'll wonder why it doesn't come off like mine does. It really matters what brush you use. The soft brushes, you should use those last. Use the stiff brushes first. Right up in here, maybe give an accent to this tree. There. Mm. I like it. That looks good. And I'm going to do that. I'm just going to go around the painting, figuring out where we need these little accent highlights. I'll drop them in. As simple as that. One detail that might be fun to add is a little climbing vine up this tree. You've probably seen these before. They're not actually part of the tree. It's not like leaves are shooting out from the trunk. It's just the vine. And like you need me to tell you that, right? But anyway, there, I think it looks good. I, I think it adds a little interest and I don't usually paint them. There's some good reasons to do it today because it's cool and it's fun. All right, you ever get that urge just to do something different? It can be something as simple as, you know, doing a little climbing vine that you don't normally do. But see, you kind of twist it around the tree like that. You know, it's very subtle and kind of just a suggestion of, of a vine. It's not like we're trying to scream, oh, here's a vine up here. It just doesn't matter that much. It's kind of just fun. Yes. All right, I like that. And kind of, again, in the fall colors, maybe not quite so pretty as that one, but just kind of in the fall colors, maybe just turning. These vines do turn colors in fall. I've seen them. Now with our fan brush, I'm just going to stab down like I usually do to create grass. This is my, of course, my number one favorite grass technique, as you guys know, if you've watched me paint grass before. There we go. That looks decent. And honestly, it just doesn't take a whole lot of effort. It takes really minimal effort to do this. It's easy and it's very nice looking. It's not even like it looks easy, it just is. Kind of fun when that happens, huh? Make sure you break your, your bristles open on your brush. That's kind of one of the secrets. And that you have a nice thin fan brush like this. That helps so much. There we go. One of the last things that I want to do up here is just kind of go around the entire painting with a very dark blue color. Blue and white is all it is, but it's very dark. And just create a, a nice reflected light on the other side of, of the trees and rocks and pretty much everything. And there you have it. It'll mix with the black and the brown and help to soften it even more, which is good. Very good. On this side, there. So you just kind of do this slowly. It takes a few minutes. And then it really helps to make things look a little more finished, certainly more professional. And a little bit more 3D, which is always a good thing, isn't it? All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun, I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs and Brushline. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.